Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Kocak. I'm the founder and CEO of Chemical Q Device. This is discussion 100, 100 weekly discussions since, since 2021, October. Today, we're going to cover 100 different uh, QML code tips. So QML stands for quantum machine learning, and it's believed that this will be the principal application for quantum computing. So I love this quote. So it says, the only way to learn a new lang new programming language is written by writing programs in it. So to get to that point, a lot of them are very, um, you wouldn't look at them as like complicated, but very customizable, uh, if you will. So this is by Dennis Ritchie, uh, creator of C programming language, uh, said that. So Google CERC uh, was announced in 2018. Uh, so we're at the first bullet point here. And it's a Python software library just for writing, manipulating, and optimizing quantum circuits. So you can't do a lot of the ML workflows without TensorFlow or TensorFlow Quantum, or uh, you might know Keras that you'll need um, in addition to the quantum uh, circuits. So you'd import those libraries too. And Qiskit is perhaps the biggest of the bunch. It's an open source uh, software de development kit uh, for working with quantum computers and simulators. And you could do experimentation with several types of quantum circuits, pulses, algorithms. There's many. It's a platform. <clears throat> it's not just one thing. And they also, you know, they have uh, quantum machine learning with it under under their neural network arbitrary class. And there's a couple underneath neural network. And you can access uh, this for free through their uh, IDEs. And uh, you know, these, you know, it's just like if you use Colab uh, and Qiskit, you could use it for free through through that. And Penny Lane is an open source Python library developed by Xanadu. Um, and they say, you'll hear this a lot. They want end-to-end -end dif differentiability. So when you're designing these things with the code that I'm going to show you, or pieces of the code, is that you want the quantum and the classical layer uh, our networks to be contributing to the overall effectiveness of the model. And you'll hear this term hybrid quantum computing, uh, meaning like you already have a deep layer, you know, like a ResNet or like a transformer, and then you also have a, a quantum circuit with it. Now, uh, I, basically, there's a lot of different sources I, I pulled from this. So all symbols and circ, uh, Qiskit algorithms and using Penny Lane. And this is for educational purposes, you know, to assist everybody with their journey. So I'll get started on this slide. And you know, so for CERC, um, in all these, if you haven't quite made it over to CoLab or the, you know, Qiskit uh, integrated, you know, development environment, you have to first install. So pip install CERC, Qiskit, or Penulane, and then you have to import it. Um, if you open up Qiskit, a lot of times it's already done for you. So a lot of times you can start uh, typing. So you never have to install Qiskit. Um, and then sometimes you do have to import other things that you'll see that first kind of like box that always appears before you start coding. And I'll show you an example in the following slide. So this is what a single qubit uh, gate looks like for circ.ry, which is a rotational uh, gate over the y-axis and you set the angles. So I'm going to set it to 0 0.7 here. And then basically what it shows is they use this thing called grid qubit. So you can see for circ.c0, which is a CX gate, which is an entangling gate, uh, the control is at zero and the one is the target. Now, Qiskit has a similar type of format and you'll see the brevity of it, especially when you're in that uh, environment. Um, Circuit.ry 0 0.7 comma zero, the zero stands for the zeroth uh, qubit or wire in this case. And then the circuit.cx, uh, so all of these are the same between circ, Qiskit and, and Penny Lane. Circ.cx would be zero for the control and one for the target. And then also for penny lane, uh, QML.ry of that same parameter that I'm setting 0.7 at the, the zeroth wire. It's a little bit more ver verbose than I would say the Qiskit uh, on average, um, meaning that there's more, more uh, letters involved, more, you know, it's a verbose. So, and then the QML.c0 is at zero to one. And then you have available devices uh, for circ, circ zone simulator, circ.simulator, CERC.QSIM, which I'll be focusing um, on especially here, is that uh, CERC.QSIM was actually used against the quantum supremacy experiment, so we'll get to that. Now, the CERC Google Sycamore was the computer quantum computer that was faced up against the, the QSIM simulator back in uh, 2019 uh, in a Nature paper in October 2019. 
Now, the next one you'll see is um, Kiskit. So they have Simulator State Vector. They have Chasm with a Q. The IBM Sherbrooke, this would be a little bit trivia for you, for those that know how many qubits this is. Um, and we'll stop and pause in a second here. And the Penny Lane, you have default.qubit, which is their go-to simulator. It's the most compatible. The lightning.qubit, which is still a CPU base, you don't have to pay for it. That one, um, you know, it doesn't work with quite as many notebooks. And lightning.gpu has to do with uh, NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, pretty much, you know, it's going to be the future of uh, hyper QML pro programming. Now, with all this together, are there any questions at this point? Any questions or comments? And I'll have the chat open too. So feel free, you can raise your hand. Uh, I see that. And then you can also, you know, post in the chat throughout this. Uh, does anybody know how many qubits the IBM Sherbrooke is? You know, <laughs> with or without looking that up, it's up to you. <laughs> 127, very nice. Yes. So it's uh, it's part of the Eagle family that uh, people like to experiment with. And that was John that put that in the chat there too. Okay, so we're going to get into it here. So this is quantum language fundamentals. So for CERC, they don't use shots, they use repetitions. So you'll see CERC.run um, of the circuit and then repetitions equals 10. Okay. So it's similar to shots, but it's it's somewhat a uh, little bit different. Now for Kiskit, setting the shots uh, equals to 10. So you could do this for simulators. You could do this for real hardware. And then for Penny Lane, um, you'll see, you know, a little bit more uh, verbose with it. But, you know, shots equals to 10 in this specific one. Awesome. Yeah. So, and again, feel free to put it in the chat or you could raise your hand as well. Now, print quantum circuit is, uh, in, in circ, you have to use something called SVG circuit. And that's just how it works. And I'll show you uh, graphical representations of these. Now, Kiskit, circuit.draw. So I kept everything circuit. So you'll see circuit, circuit, and then uh, the penny lane is circuit too. So matplotlib is is uh, quite common. I think at least for Kiskit and penny lane, you don't need to import matplotlib. So as long as you have Kiskit or penny lane, um, the QML.draw MPL, I was able to draw without importing matplotlib. So that's... That's becoming more of a standard. It's basic advanced uh, graphical uh, representations of quantum circuits. Now, special considerations for CERC is it's primarily only for quantum circuits. So you can't do optimization. You can't do loss function, all that kind of stuff. Now, Kiskit, there's limitations. Um, this is a little bit different. But if you're drawing things in Composer, those don't or I'm sorry, if you're doing things in lab, those don't always translate into composer. Composer is graphical uh, interface, um, interface. And then for Penny Lane, they have limited local hardware. They believe in photonics computing. So strawberry fields is what they use. And you could still import a whole host of Rigetti and uh, you know, Kiskit, uh, you know, devices or IBM quantum devices. And then, so here is basically, so if you're using CERC, so I'll, I'll go through this. So pip install CERC, import CERC, and you're gonna import SVG circuit. So that allows you to print this nice, uh, you know, representation of, of the quantum algorithm. So when you use the, use, you know, quantum algorithm and, and circuit are often used uh, simultaneously. It's technically a circuit, you know, at this point, um, the algorithm, you know, contains uh, the insides of it. And then, so the thing with CERC, so um, there's a couple of different ways of doing this. And if you've programmed in CERC, you'll, you could use moments, for instance. Now in this particular one, we're using circuit.append. Okay, so every time you see the append, um, so for circ.ry, I'm setting this 0 0.7 parameter and it's on the zeroth qubit. Now for the CNOT gate, you'll see it doesn't have parameters. It's, it's an X gate. It's actually a controlled X gate. And this is from qubit zero. And then the uh, target is qubit one. So the black dot is control. And then the uh, the, the box is the target uh, for control X. It's what allows for entanglement. You'll hear things such as like uh, uh, bell states. And then so print the circuit. And then in this case, you have to go SVG circuit of the circuit. And it you have to hit uh, display. So in this case, um, there's probably a way of getting rid of this, but I set it to 0 0.7. But if you take pi, which is 3.14 going on, times 0.223, you get this 0.7. So the purpose of this is to show that it, you know, th this is the same exact circuit across all of these. 
Now, moving on to Kiskit, this top portion here is typically what you'll see when you first open a, a notebook. And yes, I'll have this uh, a code. I might be able to give you the PDFs. So you'll see this here. So import stars, everything. Now visualization, I believe Matplotlib would be under there. So when I open the notebook, I really don't have to type anything. And you could probably co program other, you know, web-based uh, IDEs is what we call these, like Colab, to do similar types of things. So you don't have to, you know, install. Kiskit, you should never have to install Kiskit. It's it's just there. But there are certain things you have to import. So for instance, this circuit of, uh, it always goes quantum comma classical. So this would be two quantum bits, two classical bits. And that's what's represented here. So Q0, Q1 are the first two qubits. And then the same format in pain line and, and circ, by the way. And then there's two classical bits as well. So you'll see the circuit dot RY. So you can change it to your name, your friend's name, you know, as far as whatever you want to call your circuit. But quantum circuit has to be used, and you'll see it up here, import quantum circuit. So out of the three, it's it's the least verbose. Uh, Circuit.cx, 0, 1 is the same kind of thing, control and then target. And then same thing, you know, that we did for cert. Now, circuit.measure for Kiskit is uh, ranging from two quantum bits to two classical bits. And that's displayed by here. So you have Q0, Q1. And then within the C, it's you have a C0, which is here, and then a C1. So you cannot do quantum computing without classical if you're using measurements. So the measurements come from classical bits, okay? So quantum bit, quantum bit, two classical bits, and then output equals MPL. For that specific one. Now moving on to penny lane. So in a, in you know it's you like I said with the web based IDEs you could probably set it up so you don't have to install every time. But typically you pip install penny lane, and then you can use import penny lane without doing all these QML dots. But it's shorter. So for the other two you'll see circ and kiskit. It's just you know circ and kiskit. But penny lane's a longer name, so they use QML. Okay. So dev equals QML or penny lane dot device. And then this is the default qubit right there. And then um, this is called a QML decorator. And then this is going to pick up dev, which is up here with the specific simulator and the number of wires. And then you always keep in mind. So when you set wires equals to two, that means qubit zero and one. It's not one and two. So that's always like a, a particular thing that you have to be aware of uh, when you're programming. And then... Also with measurements here, there's QML.xval. There's um, different ways of doing you know, different outputs here too. You could do counts. Um, and I set the params is equal to 0. 0.7, same with the other two. So this QML.draw or QML.draw underscore MPL has a lot of different ways of representing circuits. I chose penny lane, it's got some color in, in it. And then uh, also, um, I have to, anytime you're doing, you know, the, it's basically the circuit params, you'll see circuit params. Now, another thing with penny lane is my, my uh, parameters weren't showing up is because you have to specify decimals. So in, in this case, decimals equals one will get me that 10th place for 0 0.7. So for instance, if it was, you know, 0. 0.6 and higher, um, I think it just rounds to one if it's point you know, five or something like that. But anyways, that worked uh, so I can get my parameters to show. Are there any questions at this point with circuits and drawing circuits? It's not a trivial thing at all. Um, you could probably take a good class and, you know, the specific language that you really want to get into. And, <clears throat> but it's important because a lot of times you, you need to show people what you're doing. Uh, sometimes if it's not just in code, you want to draw a circuit. So these are three good formats for that. So any questions? So I saw some new people come on as well. And then, so feel free, you could raise your hand, you can put it in the, in the chat as well. Awesome, so we're gonna go on, so we're on 19 here. So when you think of a parameterized quantum circuit, you always think in terms of embedding layers, variational layers, circuit measurement. If you have, if this is classical data, like you have classical data. Now, if this is quantum data, then you don't need the embedding layer. You go straight into the variational layer. But in this case, it's has classical data. It's an example. Now, for circ, you have to do a lot of things by hand. Um, you know, so a basis state would be like a circ.x, which would be 
you know, this, it's a poly X uh, and you can choose Y or Z and your angle uh, would be more like a rotational gate, gate, like your RXY, RY, those types of things. Now in Kiskit, if you've ever run anything in Kiskit demos, you're, you're going to run into ZZ feature map. Uh, there's also Z feature map and whether or not it's the best feature map to use, it's, it's a standard that everybody else uses. So you'll see examples like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like the model is this and, you know, here's your data. And they'll say it's, it's uh, separable with a ZZ feature map. And people know what that means. So you, you probably won't see these changing too much. Poly feature map is another one too. So again, this is where classical data comes into a quantum circuit. And the, the term that we put on this is parameterized quantum circuit, variational quantum algorithm, it, it typically has some meaning to a parameter that gives it its AI or machine learning aspect of quantum. So also with the embedding layer, so this is the part that typically has some rotational gates with uh, variational parameters, meaning the, the angles of these gates get optimized over the course of the run, very similar to like a deep learning network with weights and biases. So IQP embedding is a little bit more computational heavy. Uh, amplitude embedding is, is quite common to see in Penny Lane. Now for variational layers, again, for CERC, I put, you know, you can make your own. So CERC.CZ, uh, CERC those R, X, R, Ys typically means it has some, you know, trainable, uh, like the AI portion of it. Now for Kiskit, Kiskit has a lot of different algorithms. So these are just two. And keep in mind, these are, you know, this is just a brief overview, this whole presentation, and just to give you an idea of what all you can do. So for variational layer, you have two local real amplitudes. You see a lot. Those are two examples. For penny lane here, uh, QML.random layers and uh, QML.strong entangling layers. And within these templates uh, for and variational layers, you can set a ratio of you know the the amount of rotational layers versus the amount of um, you know uh, entangling layers. And then for measurement, for CERC, you can use CERC measure, uh, measurement gate, and for Kiskit, CERC.measure, CERC.measure all. And then for Penny Lane, uh, QML X file, we saw on the previous slide, that's a, a poly Z, uh, typically, QML that classical shadow. And feel free to raise your hand at any point here too. Um, so we're gonna move on to measurements and operators. So measurements, um, this is a continuation CERC, you do measurement gate, poly measurement gate, and Kiskit QC uh, mid mid circ. So mid circuit measurement, uh, which is available for Kiskit or, or Penny Lane, is basically you're measuring in the middle of the gate, and this is kind of like you know if you're cutting circuits or doing those types of things. And also for Kiskit QC mid circ dot measure, you'll see for Penny Lane it's convenient. So I think it's just M underscore qubit. So in this case, it'd be the zeroth qubit that you're going to measure before the next operation. And you, you also have to use this cond. So QML.cond is uh, required every time you're you know, uh, measuring uh, it in different parts of the circuit, not at the end. And for circ, so you also have unitary operators, circ.gate, circ.matrix, gate.on. And then for uh, Kiskit here, you also have, um, you can combine operators. So a.tensor b, a.expand b, you can combine uh, operators in a different way, a.compose b, uh, op.compose. And I think these are very frequently used. Now in Penny Lane, um, operator to operator, uh, you can use qml.product. Um, or you can use QML that uh, it's like, it's an exponent of these, you know, between these operators. And you can also use uh, QML that eigenvalues. Uh, a lot of times you need your uh, things to line up right. So when you're porting into deep learning, um, you know, frameworks or tutorials or demos, those types of things, you, you're going to have to start getting into this and understand what's the, what's the output of your quantum circuit uh, as it goes back into classical binary data. And then, uh, also for CERC, they have CERC.Kraus, Kraus Ops as well, too. Okay, are there any questions at this point? Any uh, questions or comments? So again, this is where the rubber meets the road. There's a lot behind languages, and uh, you know this is a, a good introduction to it. So 
And then, so there's, so this one is, is still a continuation of circuit. So you have circ insert strategy and you can use earliest in line. Um, for Kiskit, MCX gate and, you know, MC MTV chain, uh, it's part of the uh, circuit library. Now in Pennyland, QML.broadcast allows you to, you know, you're using, you know, usually a, a variation of rotational gates and, and CNOT gates or C CZ get, gates, those types of things. And if you only have two qubits, it doesn't, <laughs> all of it will likely give you the same circuit, no matter if you do single or ring um, or if it's like a full entanglement, okay? So once you get up to three qubits, four qubits, then you start to see, you know, differences or opportunities one might have for another. And keep in mind, it doesn't always mean that you have to use the, the largest circuit. Um, a lot of times you're looking for the most efficient circuit to use. So, uh, you know, it, it doesn't always require the biggest quantum algorithm as far as like a, a, a machine learning wor workflow. Now, CERC also uses this thing called moments. Um, so you'll see this a lot. And I'll show you in, a, in an upcoming graphical slide, CERC.moment. And then also for Kiskit, uh, you'll see Grover operator, efficient SU2. Those are, or especially the SU2 is very common. Now, tensor networks such as these in Penny Lane with QML, that matrix, matrix product state or uh, tensor tree net, networks, these are supposed to help alleviate the issue of not getting much qubits uh, with, um, you know, quantum simulators, you know, when you're using NVIDIA GPUs. So say for instance, NVIDIA has done a study with, um, you know, several hundred uh, uh, GPU quantum sim simulators, I think over, you know, six or 800, a lot. And then they're able to get this, um, you know, quantum circuit with like 1100 or 1200 qubits in, in some type of workflow. Now in the news this week, there was Brook, Brookhaven National Lab that's using over 200 of these, of these you know, uh, quantum simulators. And you can either use tensor networks, which are these two or state vector. So there's some peculiar out, some, you know, specifics between the two when you can use, say the state vector is, is typically more flexible, but it has restrictions with runtime and, and GPU you know, like it takes a, a lot of RAM basically. And then the last part is really cool. So in CERC, you can uh, output to JSON, um, output input to JSON. You could also do the same for CHASM. So CHASM is, is with the Q there. And then with Qiskit, uh, Qiskit.converters. So you can go circuit.gad.dag. And Penny Lane actually allows you to import as, as far as it looks like the whole, um, Kiskit library, QML dot from Kiskit into Penny Lane. They do similar things with uh, PyQuil, which I believe is is Rigetti, but you know, these are these are huge things. So are there any questions or comments regarding these quantum computing circuits at this point? I saw there's a uh, you know some new people that uh, joined. So it's great to have everybody. Yeah, so, I'll, and I'll show you a little bit more as far as uh, code and how it applies to all this, and this is for Peter and, and others too. Now, this next thing is uh, compiling. So, uh, tr uh, transpiling is, is part of compiling, and, you know, this whole slide is dedicated to that. So, in CERC, they call it transformers. Now, this is not like transformers that we know, like, you know, neural nets, you know, that we see uh, from Hugging Face. So optimize for target gate, uh, gate set, uh, drop negligible operations. So you can modify the circuit before it, you know, reaches the ma machine language. And if you get really good, if you know exactly what you, you want, you can do something like that. Now in Qiskit, it's called Qiskit Transpiler, and you can set different optimizations of the quantum algorithm. So you can set it to zero, one, two, or three. So three would be the most optimized. And so... Uh, just to be sure, sure with uh, terms here is when we're talking about optimization, we're talking of the circuit. We're not talking of the, the machine learning or the uh, quantum machine learning optimization of the, you know, the hybrid, um, a, the AI portion of it. And with uh, Penny Lane, you can do QML.simplify, QML.compile. So again, these are more, you know, kind of kind of rough. Um, but as you can see for Penny Lane, you can do cancel inverses. So your specific things that you want done to your uh, to your circuit before it reaches the machine or the quantum computer and even simulators too. So 
all of this slide for quantum computers is basically if you can optimize the number of gates that you have and certain gates do better with uh, quantum noise than others, then you don't have that impact of quantum noise as much. And then for simulators, it's mostly for runtime uh, and RAM, right? So if it's the same circuit, it's doing the same thing, even though if you wrote it a certain way, by the time it reaches the quantum, computer, uh, quantum simulator, then you're not using as much RAM and then it can, it can perform faster there too. And uh, you could also do pattern matching, merge rotations, those types of things. So think of like, like you know, when you're making these algorithms or circuits, you know, you you can do a rough thing like QML.simplify, or you could do something uh, like these other ones, cancel inverses. Now for Qiskit, again here, you could set things to, you know, the layout method being trivial, scheduling method equals ASAP. Um, and then there's some other ones with dynamical uh, decoupling as well. And again, with circ, you know, these are more, so circ align left, you know, as far as where you want your gates to be for the quantum computer or simulator, stratifying the circuit, uh, merging qubit unitaries. So, you know, there's, all, especially for Qiskit and Penny, like there's more of this, you know, like there's a general approach with optimization level or QML.simplify, and then there's things that you could do specifically as well. And then, so this is a, a big slide. So I believe that you'll be able to get pretty far with um, CPU uh, quantum simulators. So IE, you have something like your uh, default.qubin and penny lane. You have something like, you know, circ.qsim. You know, these are, you know, our quantum simulators. Now for the big, big task, which is like the one I mentioned for Brookhaven and NVIDIA, and you're working, you know, quantum mechanics and quantum physics and quantum algorithms into existing machine learning workflows is you're going to need a GPU. So the NVIDIA Ku Quantum is, it belongs to NVIDIA. And each of these three have access to it, um, at least for single GPU. And I know at least for Penny Lane, you can do multi. So that Brookhaven one with over 200 GPU, you know, quantum simulators, that's taking advantage of Ku Quantum right there. So in CERC, um, you, it looks like you have to do, it, it's it's a command install, it's not through the Python notebook, to get down to this QSIM options using GPU equals to true. So there's a way of doing it. And then with Qiskit, um, perhaps a, a more straightforward is this Q's var. Now, AER is, is Qiskit, so it's like air simulator. So this would be QSV, that's the, um, the you know, NVIDIA part. So, you know, so using this particular one, you're using state vector instead of tensor uh, networks. And then you can see you're gonna enable it equal to true. And then in this case, you're not gonna use a noise model. So for Penny Lane, the big one is called lightning.gpu. And they say, you always want to use this with adjoint. You should be able to. So adjoint is a, it, if you're familiar with, uh, back propagation for classical. This is the quantum equivalent where you have, um, you know, backward differentiation. You also, uh, same thing with reversibility with quantum. So you can only do that, I think, in the simulator setup. And you also have to set MPI is equal to true, and then batch observable is equal to true. You the MPI is mandatory, and then batch observe is uh, gets you additional performance. And so I'll show you in the upcoming slides here. So circuit information, I use moment.operations for circ, for Qiskit, uh, circuit.depth, circuit.width. You can also use circuit.size, and I'll show you what those mean in the upcoming slides. And then also um, QML.specs is the one for Penny Lane. If you want your environment, like the, uh, you know, the Linux and all this other stuff, that's uh, QML.about, okay? And then further modifications with expansion strategy. Awesome. Um, any questions or comments at this point? And it'll be interesting to kind of see, you know, people progressing, you know, through these languages. I, I really believe, as with the quote in the beginning from the C founder, is that that's how you learn languages is by writing, you know, your own models, and your own code. So... Awesome. So this is basically, this is the whole point of quantum machine learning. Okay. So we talked about quantum circuits and now it, it's in this hybrid environment where everything's binary. So you did what you needed to do with the data set with the quantum algorithm. Now it goes into 
um, you know, you have gradient algorithms and loss functions and optimization. And this is the same thing, and it works the same way, uh, I believe, compared to a standard PyTorch workflow. So in, in CERC, you can't do it with CERC. So you need to use uh, TensorFlow Quantum, uh, in, the, in this case, also TensorFlow. And then uh, for differentiation, uh, for difference, parameter shift, and then for optimization, this is this is common. So you have a machine learning model, but now you have a machine learning model with a quantum algorithm and its output is in binary. OK, so in all of these, you can you can use different types of optimizers, just like in classical loss functions, just like in classical. Think of it as like a special Python function where the data was manipulated in a certain way. Now it's back to binary. So with Qu Qiskit, you could use for gradient algorithms, base estimator gradient, finite difference. Uh, it's a basic finite difference. Uh, loss functions, kernel loss, and you'll hear about this all the time, cross entropy loss, um, you know, similar to uh, binary cross entropy. You'll see that one too. Now Qiskit, if you run these demos, you'll see Kobola a lot for optimization and gradient descent is a open as well. So it's this process of, of converting all of this quantum, you know, circuits and the code and then having it merge well, you know, with existing, you know, PyTorch, uh, mostly PyTorch. It has some type of TensorFlow too, workflows. So in Penny Lane, we call this interface equals. So you can set it to none. You can send it TF is equal to TensorFlow. Interface is equal to Torch. But at this time, at this stage, think of it not like quantum's like over there and classical's over here. Think of it at this stage like it processed in this specific, you know, mini batch, uh, quantumly converted to binary, and it keeps doing that. You know, goes through uh, quantum through these one of these three languages, goes back to binary, back to binary. It, it's it's very much, uh, it's. It's just this extra step that you're taking because you're hoping to get this, you know, performance boost or new utility from that quantum circuit at that specific time. So di differentiation, uh, I've mentioned adjoint a lot. Parameter shift. Uh, so there's reverse flow. Uh, there's review or reverse accumulation, which is uh, we do this already classically. So this is uh, back. Uh, this is um, basically uh, going in reverse back propagation. And then you also have adjoint. So parameter shift is friendly to both quantum simulators and to quantum hardware. So quantum hardware in specific is forward accumulation. So it can't do the back propagation and it can't do adjoint for hardware. But everything you can do with a quantum hardware, you can do with simulators. So it's a very specific thing. Now in Penny Lane, you could use Atom and you can use all these other ones. Um, they also have their own optimizers, QNG, uh, QNS BSA optimizer as well. So uh, are there any questions at this point? And we'll go over this slide. So this builds on the previous uh, kind of graphical one. You know, so that last slide was like converting all this quantum information into classical. And then, you know, so, you know, optimizers, loss functions, uh, those types of things is, is uh, the same thing as classical. It's just you did something in quantum uh, previously before that. Kevin, I do have a question. This yeah, is, go ahead. I, do, you know, would is so far the research is done only with the NVIDIA CUDA cores, right? There's no research conducted with AMD GPUs. Yeah, I haven't found any. I mean, it doesn't mean that it's it's not coming. So, yeah, I haven't found anything for any other manufacturer as far as like everybody can access it through uh, an open source library. Okay. But it is, it's it's in the works possibly. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like the technical wherewithal to turn a, a CPU or a GPU. There's lots of quantum simulators out there. So I, that shouldn't be the issue. It's it's more like the nuts and bolts. And say, for instance, like NVIDIA wants to dedicate these many simulators to CoLab. You know, there's, uh, you know, a shortage in GPUs typically. And then now you have this allotment for KuQuantum and those types of things. So, yeah, the, the Brookhaven article yeah. is really good. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, the, the problem with AMD is that NVIDIA is the creator of uh, CUDA. And CUDA has been around a long time, and it is so far out in front of everybody else in terms of 
being a general purpose uh, computationally intensive interface. And of course, it only works with NVIDIA GPUs. Um, so what AMD has to do is come up with their own framework and then they got to convince everybody out there that needs access to such a thing to build a module or to, you know, to build a, uh, an API. So like, for example, TensorFlow, um, it, it has a backend plugin for CUDA. They have to convince the people who make TensorFlow uh, install, you know, a backend connector for whatever AMD comes up with. Intel has the same problem. Intel has GPUs. Nobody really knows about them. Um, but again, CUDA is so far out in front of these people because it's been around for such a long time. Um, I don't I don't know that you're, you're going to see it, but uh, that doesn't mean there isn't somebody out there making some sort of framework that will allow you to take advantage of AM, AMD GPUs. Yeah, and I mean, my recommendation to, to anybody, because I've run on circ.qsim, lightning.qubit, um, you know, circ.simulator, all these, is that first start off with just the regular CPUs. So the circ.qsim is actually, it's a 90-core Xeon processor. It's a CPU. Um, but when I run it versus their circ.simulator, it's a lot faster. <laughs> and actually, I'll have a demo uh, upcoming with that, too. So it, I think it's a progression because there's a couple more lines of code for CUDA. They, I think they did pip install as opposed to wheels and dockers. I, I think that's to make it more convenient. Yeah, and um, you know the these big studies that you see with multi you know GPUs, I, I pretty much can guarantee you that they've done some portion of that on CPUs. Saw the speed, it's working. And then as opposed to just starting off, you know, with GPU quantum simulators. Um, anybody else? I saw Peter, you put something in the chat or. Yeah. And, you know, this continues to be developed, right? So Kiskit and Penny Lane both do the QML um, and, you know, CERT relies on TensorFlow Quantum, which is similar to uh, probably more similar to Penny Lane, you know, like a library. And there's PyTorch Quantum and, and these types of things. But yeah, I, I haven't really seen anything as, as far as any other manufacturer for GPUs. And most of the code I I, I run, it, it'll say CUDA. You know, it doesn't say, <laughs> you know, any other manufacturer, you know, for just classical notebooks that I, I use. Awesome. So this slide is a continuation of the last one. So these three graphics are the same. Now, you either want information about the circuit, which is quite common, because these are simple. But imagine you have like, you know, all these real amplitudes, you know, for your var variational layer, and you have a ZZ feature map, and you're just using the one word. And you don't want to have to like look back at and count, you know, all of these things. So uh, for instance, for circ, you do uh, this moment and then moment.operations. Now in specific, it'll give you this RY and then the parameter there. Uh, and again, this is the 0.7 or 3.14 times 0.223. And the C not, C not gate as well uh, for the zero to one. And um, it, it was more of a verbose than this, but this is the gist of the circ one. Now for Kiskit, and I believe there's probably a lot more options than this, but circuit.width, um, so width uh, corresponds to the vertical here, okay? So you have Q0, Q1, and then you have C0 and C1. So it's, it's width, it's two quantum gates, and it's uh, uh, two classical gates. And then also the depth, they're counting it as three. So the depth is like a neural network, right? So this is a very sim simple circuit, but we're going to count layers. So in this case, you have RY, C0, and then these two measurement gates actually stack on each other. And it's the same thing with other gates too. If they if they can slide together, it uh, reduces the depth of the circuit. So, so it's one, two, and then the measurements are three. Now circuit size is the number of gates used. So in this case, uh, we're going to count measurements. So RY, C0 and then measure, measure, and that output is four, okay? 
So then in Penny Lane, QML.specs gives you a lot. And I had to abbreviate this one just because it's it had other information too. But what's really important about this one is yes, it'll give you, you know, all the gates and wires. Um, but the device name, so some of these are changeable. So in Penny Lane, you can change your .qubit.autograd to something else, and you can change your expansion strategy to, to something else. But these, when you look at all the documentation, this is what it, what it's defaulting to, right? Because my circuit, I didn't change, you know, this expansion strategy to, you know, some other method that's available. And then interface equals auto. So this is like, if you're interfacing with TensorFlow, or or torch or Jax or or numpy, um, you can specify that in the original code that I showed you. Um, differentiation method. This is also changeable too, and this should be uh, adjustable to adjoint for this one. Uh, gradient function back backdrop. So, anyways, you can get pretty far with you know these libraries, but if you're not doing these background tests and if you don't understand what this means. There could be a performance, usually a speed boost, in, in switching to something else that's available. Uh, any questions about that? So again, this is this is uh, circuit information, right? It's telling you information about the. This is machine learning information at the bottom of uh, Penny Lane here, and um, you know, also giving you the basics of some of these gates. And keep this in mind. This is just. <laughs> just the tip of the iceberg uh, as far as this is just a, a, a basic, a brief of uh, what's available out there. Awesome. Okay, so this is all data sets here. So a big one is for chemistry. So CERC uses open fermion and then Qiskit. You have to be aware with Qiskit, there's um, Ignis and there's Aqua. And you could find this in the release notes, it's at the top. So Ignis and Aqua are, are deprecated. However, you can still access that doc documentation. And for me, it doesn't show up to bold at the top of the page. So it used to be Kiskit Chemistry, I think, and now Kiskit Nature en encompasses a lot of other things as well. So these are, you know, Hartree Falk, uh, Ground State Eigensolver. Now for Penny Lane, it's the QChem module. A lot of their stuff is bright colors, you know, lots of graphics, um, you know, it's very helpful. So they have molecular Hamiltonian as, and dipole interactions as examples. Now in CERC, I also found this demo and they, they basically took fashion MNIST and then they called a stilted quantum data set to, to get it so it's like a, a quantum data set. So you, you remove a bunch of images and then you know, you're converting this classical data set into, uh, I believe you don't need an a, a bet embedding layer in this, this specific one. So in Qiskit, uh, ad hoc data, and this is specific I brought up before, you can separate this with a ZC feature map. And then also uh, in Penny Lane, um, you know, QML.data.load. Um, and then this is going to load this molecule, looks like uh, beryllium hydride in that specific case. Now, like I said, in CERC, you, it, it's just a circuit drawer and you can, and, you know, investigate circuits. And in and, and TensorFlow Quantum, which is, it's, like I said, more like Penny Lane, spin system, excited cluster uh, uh, states. Now, Kiskit has digits. They also have breast cancer. And this is another thing here. In this data sets thing, you have to be aware of the, um, I think it was Aqua. So I kept winding up on these Aqua pages and maybe they, you know, are compatible. Uh, say, I know I found ad hoc data on Aqua, but that's just a heads up with the, um, the Kiskit, uh, some of these, uh, like, especially for the data sets. And again, with Penny Lane, QML, that data, that load, and then Buzz, uh, Bose uh, Hubbard. So the point of running quantum data sets is you don't need this embedding layer, right? So quantum chem chemistry, for instance, we could do all this in the computer and represent it. So it's not like classical data. So that's the hope of uh, using it for that application. And likely it will come to many other areas too. And, you know, we saw the conversion to Kiskit Nature to, um, or from Kiskit Chemistry to Kiskit Nature to include other uh, data sets as well. Any questions regarding uh, quantum data? I do have one. Is there synthesized quantum data? Is that something that people are developing 
Well, in the real world, it, it doesn't store very long. So our quantum, you know, RAM, or that's the term they put on it, we're talking like milliseconds or seconds, you know, of storing like, say, if you take a medical image and, you know, that's just how it is, it is we have issues with the storage part of that. Um, so there's, you know, certain fields like, you know, such as in chemistry is that you can go straight into the, the variational part of the circuit without embedding. Um, but I, I think that's a long-term goal for most fields. And you saw with the stilted data set where with the CERC is you can do modifications to it so that, you know, when, by the time it, it runs through that quantum circuit, then it's, you know, a lot more, it'll, it'll run faster and, you know, I think better results too. So. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then, so this specific page is dedicated to CERC demos. Okay. So this one, I like a lot, this upper left-hand one, multi-dimensional qubits. They have one for qubits and I was able to take it up to 10 dimensions. So that'd be like a 10 dimension qubit. Now a qubit is two, a qubit is three, a cube core is four. And the amount of information, so you know, people want two to the n for uh, for qubits, where n is the number of qubits, and that gives you the amount of available states. Okay, so if you have two qubits for two to the n uh, for qubits, that's four. Now, if you have two states for a qubit, uh, that's three to the n, so that's nine. So right off the bat, like a three to the n. So I don't see, I don't think you'll see this anytime soon with hardware, just because we're struggling with, you know, qubits and, you know, <laughs> five or six different types of quantum hardware. But for simulators, there's no reason why, in my opinion, and based off this demo and what I've seen, uh, why you can't develop software to start working with like, you know, 10 dimensional qubit, you know, like all quantum inspired machine learning kind of stuff. Um, so, the faster with QSIM CERC, so three or four of these are based on QSIM CERC. And as I mentioned before, QSIM was the simulator that was uh, pitted against the uh, Google Sycamore uh, late 2019 for the first quantum advantage. It's it, That one was run off a, a, a supercomputer. The QSIM CERC that you use now is a 90 core Xeon uh, processor, at least running it. And you could probably, whatever, you know, they have that setting, you could probably... <laughs> get a faster QSIM CERC. Anyway, it's substantially better than CERC sim simulator and the demo is 25X speed up um, and you can adjust threads there too. And then here's, this is actually the separate right one, uses CERC.QSIM, it was inside a penny lane demo uh, for a larger problem. And the thing that they cut down is 500,000 shots that they took with this one. Uh, and they just cut down on qubits. So instead of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, a supercomputer with, you know, simulating 50 something qubits against the quantum computer. Now you're looking at like, you know, in the teens, I think it was like 16, but that was a cool demo, you know, for sure. And then you have larger quantum circuits at 32 qubits, 14 depth. However, it was just constructing the search <laughs> on this 90 core Xeon, which took, you know, which takes this, you know, compute power, but it, you know, it's, it's not ready for a machine learning work workflow at this point. So tunable pulses. So with quantum computers, you can run in, in say at least two different modes, pulse mode, gate mode. Gate mode is the most common. Now pulse mode is kind of like fine tuning. You use quantum simulators to simulate that environment. So you're not wasting uh, QPU time or hardware time by the time it goes onto the actual device. But you can modify this hold time, rise time, I've done other demos that, you know, uh, you could just change the way the, the curves look basically, coupling megahertz. And then this other one, uh, calculating gradients. As I said before, CERC is just for quantum circuits. So you need TensorFlow Quantum, which is also a Google product. Uh, you also need te uh, TensorFlow in this specific one, um, which is also a Google product as well. Any questions regarding CERC and, and the demos with CERC? And then on to the next is Qiskit. So they have this demo out there, higher effective dimensions. We're still trying to understand like, you know, how this relates to overfitting, like if you have overfitting problems and, you know, classical models. But anyways, I was able to modify this one for, with more samples, uh, a 
the ZZ feature map instead of their Z. So sometimes a certain feature map will work better than others. And then also uh, they have this other demo. It's it's an eight pixel image. It's a toy problem, but they have a certain um, you know value that they got. I doubled the circuit size with more iterations to get a hundred percent train and testing ac accuracies for that one. And the if you t the takeaway with all of this stuff is that there's Kiskit and Penny Lane models out there. And they allow you through this specific one um, and Kiskit torch connector, you're putting this quantum algorithm right in the middle of some other layer of the, the uh, torch model. So if you have a convolutional pooling layers, these types of things, and this one, it was uh, at the end, um, but as part of the fully connected layers, you have that uh, this quantum circuit. And these are two of the lines of code, self.qnn, is equal to torch connector. So if you're familiar with defining, you know, these functions and uh, the self that QNN is part of the forward module. Okay. But this is really important because it gives us kind of like this early start to start, you know, putting quantum algorithms into as all of this will likely get much better in the future, you know, speed and performance. Now the quantum auto, auto encounter, I didn't have as much luck with adjusting qubits. You can also do uh, repetitions of the variational layer, which is real amplitudes. And there's also another PyTorch QGAN one. And then this, this specific one, you'll see numq outputs, um, you know, between, you know, these different parts of code. And it, it's cool to follow these demos and you can click on these links when I put on up, you know, when I put this up for uh, on LinkedIn. Now, I wasn't aware of this, but you could do continuous machine learning tr training. So a lot of us think ChatGPT was trained in whatever, uh, two years ago, you know, October, you know, or what was that September 21. And then anyways, there's certain times where you can get a continuous flow of data for machine learning. And this was, th this is the Kiskit approach of doing that where you can change samples and features. So, my recommendation is to run demos, see what you can change, um, you know, equals this and then change into something else or double the qubits, double the gates. That's always a good start. Are there any questions regarding the Kiskit tutorials? And then, so this is Penny Lane. So this, I did 26 of these. They have now 27 uh, quantum machine learning models. So this is a couple of weeks ago. And these were kind of the top ones uh, or some of the, the ones I liked uh, the most. Now, you'll hear me say a joint, a joint, a joint for uh, differentiation uh, methods. So in this one, it helped to reduce runtime. Uh, in other words, it sped it up by using this simple command, uh, either in the decorator, usually the decorator and penny line. Now, improve model accuracy. So on this specific one, I did just twice the number of qubits. So it increased some of the random, um, they're pre-trained models. So before you even, you know, had to do training. Increased model speed. So like I said, one of the first things you, you should check if you get a penny lane notebook is just substitute lightning dot uh, or default dot qubit for lightning dot qubit. If it, if it behaves weird or if it's taking too long, your current model is not compatible with it, but it's just, it's low hanging fruit to, to run. And then also uh, this is a QGANs, uh, this lower left one, so it's 98. I just increased the Q depth with that uh, for enhanced images for, for GANs. So quantum generative adversarial networks. And then this middle one, refined classification accuracy. I switch it from QML to CZ to a C naught. And then um, for this last lower one, this is analogous to the KISS KISS one, but in this case, it's QML.QNN torch layer that's going into an existing model. So you can, there's like all these models for hugging face and transformers, um, you know, vision and, you know, segmentation and uh, object detection. If you could figure out how to put these layers in with with quantum algorithms, that's a that's a big start and it and it works. Awesome. So this is a quote from Steve Jobs. So everybody should learn to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. So indeed, it's helped me with my day to day operations. 
And, um, you know, CERT, Kiskit, and Penny Lane software platforms are designed to imp help improve existing workflows in Python, PyTorch, TensorFlow, their performance. Um, and then programming resources are easily available and accessible for experimentation in most cases. Kiskit, the cloud IDE, has a free tier with access to graphical circuit composer. So you get, you get so much for it. I haven't paid him anything at this point. So all three platforms offer NVIDIA GPU or multi-GPU simulators. And you're going to, in my opinion, you're going to see a lot more in the news because I've seen, you know, an article, it was related to Tom's hardware. I've seen NVIDIA do it on their own. And now we have Brookhaven National Laboratory with these multi-GPU quantum simulators. And again, these aren't for the necessarily like the huge problems, like for hardware, right? So even if you had some noise, you know, you get a huge problem solved. This is more for these, you know, these uh, machine learning workflows where the quantum simulators are meshing well with existing uh, ML workflows. The call to action is these parameterized circuit data set processing by incorporating established deep learning pr uh, principles with uh, simulators, it, they have to get better. Now, somebody says over parameterize the whole thing, meaning like make um, you know so many qubits circuit and then just do so many layers. No matter what you're running on, it's not an efficient run process to do quantum simulation or quantum simulators. Um, but this will likely get better because think of it like deep learning got better with like dropout. And now we could, you know, if we can switch to quantum data as or input, more efficient architectures instead of just having things like, okay, now your R, Rx, Ry, or Z, you know, they were optimized to this, you know, perfect, uh, you know, rotational angles. This is a very simple circuit that was designed in 2012. So all, all of this will likely have to get a lot better. So you've heard me say adjoint differentiation for, and that's, you know, for not only time, but memory efficiency, uh, simpler, pure states. So if you don't have quantum noise, uh, you're working with the surface of the, the block sphere. So the data, and this is coming from uh, Seth Lloyd at L, Maria Scheld at Xanadu, and um, I think Kristen Te Temme at uh, IBM, they work on these types of things. So if you have noise and you know mixed states, you're more inside the block sphere. It's it's preferable to be on the outside. You know, it just sounds easier to work with. And then you can get exact expectation values too of circuits um, without having to run so many you know hardware shots. So that's where you know these things the the paths are kind of separating. But at that same time, there's no reason why you'd have like this hybrid quantum machine learning model that works well and then two or three years from now, quantum algorithm, or yeah, quantum algorithm running on, on a quantum hardware for a big problem that you see, like it's the more compatibility for machine learning is, is gonna be uh, in simulators, at least in the upcoming time periods. Uh, so here's the references. So you can click on these, it goes up to, you know, like hundred something and then through L. And then was there any slides that anybody had questions about to go back to? So yeah, it's a, it's an emerging field for sure. And all the pieces are together to run quantum circuits and, and many advanced machine learning models. The, the harder part, well, the easier part is you can compare quantum algorithm to quantum algorithm, which I've done a lot. And the harder part is to get that uh, advantage in performance or some new utility with quantum versus our really good classical world that we deal with every day. Yeah, so and then if anybody has questions, you know, so Peter, you'd put in the chat, so the OpenGL and uh, Rock, um, I'm not quite as familiar with. Uh, they're both open source, okay. Um, but yeah, you can, you know, and it, it's interesting to see because it does not take, you know, too much time to get into quantum. When I get on other calls, other meetups, not besides mine, I get this thing like, oh, we have to learn all this. But if you learn it in a specific way and head straight to the languages, you know, I, that's what I would do. 
because that's that's how it's going to be worked with right and it, it'll change you know probably mostly for the better oh, okay so yeah peter says they're most they're equivalent to cuda as, as far as other gpus and yes so peter says also no equivalence to Kuquantum. quantum yeah so i and i was seeing this issue in classical notebooks and i i most of them are you work in Torch, it's say for like Hugging Face, you open in Colab, which is Google, and then your GPU option is NVIDIA if it has one. However, I did come across some other ones where it says GPU equals. So I, I, I don't think that that was tied to NVIDIA at, at that point. So, but yeah, competition is good. And I, like I said, this is, I think we have a very good start on this, you know, because it, it works. It's just getting it to that next level of like, you know, these quantum advantages and utility or sometimes speed ups. So anybody else that we haven't heard from? So Jane or um, Diego? Uh, if not uh, Dave or Dan? Then uh, Aquila or Javier. Yeah, I I mean, I spent a lot of time in quantum and this, like I said, I haven't missed a week since October 21. And the stuff that I'm doing now feels a lot more productive because it's it's with the actual languages. So I could read a bunch of books and I'll be expert, you know, theoretically, but I, I think it really comes down to, you know, how you can program and, you know, learn from your mistakes now as, as things, you know, get awesome. Like we're waiting for these awesome days <laughs> in quantum. And then, uh, so we have Larry or go ahead, Ron. So Kevin, uh, as you're going through the, uh, uh, th three of the common ones as far as the different frameworks for quantum uh, Kiskit, Circ, and Penny Lanes um, they're all Python frameworks right? Yeah um, Have you developed any sort of uh, sense of what you like about one versus the other or how they compare? Yeah um, I mean Circ when it when it comes down to actually just getting a basic job done? Yeah, basic jobs that, you know, definitely between Kiskit and, and Penny Lane, I would say that, especially with machine learning, you know, uh, Penny Lane has that advantage. I, I think that anybody moving forward will have to know at least those two. The rest, I mean, Circ has been around for a while, but it's just basically for quantum circuits. And it's a little bit verbose compared to the other two. So I, I'm not seeing quite that separation, but it's kind of in that whole, you know, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Quantum, if the notebooks, you know, for Keras, these are all Google, you know, those four. So it'll be interesting because, you know, Google's been quiet, you know, since uh, quantum supremacy, they, you know, keep improving the original quantum computer with other aspects of quantum sensing and, uh, you know, those types of things. Um, so, but yeah, I, I would say now I, it, some of the penny lane things is that you know they think so they have a they have a valid argument in saying that they're a leader in, in some of these areas so there are a lot of papers that use penny lane um it, it tends to be a little bit more you know less you know <laughs> verbose but you know it's a little bit more concise i would say and easier to use now they're taking it with these you know multi gpu simulators and um, I, I don't think the other platforms can. On the other hand, with Kiskit, as you can do so much with it, and the Kiskit nature, which used to be chemistry, and I see Kiskit dynamics, which I haven't really, really even got into, where you could potentially, you know, modify the physics of quantum simulators. S sounds really interesting. So I, I think, for the most thing, if, if you're just doing quantum M ML, you can get a away with a lot of stuff with just penny lane that's what it seems like yeah i think i have to agree uh, i find circ a bit tedious um seems like you gotta do a lot put a lot of lines of code in 
Uh, but Kiskit has its issues too. One thing I like about Kiskit is the ability to name to uh, name and separate your your qubits into individual registers. That's a pretty powerful feature. They probably all have that, but I haven't really run into how you do it in Circ. Uh, and I don't I haven't spent that much time in Penny Lane. But uh, some of the things I like about Penny Lane that you've shown are the fact that you can just throw a decorator on something. Penny Lane just automatically knows that it's a hybrid module, that it needs to be uh, integrated, you know, in their hybrid system, and it's going to run the, it's automatically just going to weave the, the quantum stuff in and out of the rest of what you're doing. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, it is, a, so if you're working a CERT, which by the way, like several of those demos, like the multi-dimensional QDETs, and, you know, they're, they're just coming from different angles. So it's good to see all of those. So, you know, but also there's simplicity too, because say like in simple circuits, you know, Kiskit overall would probably be, you know, the most concise or like the easiest just to type up and, you know, print a circuit in four or five lines of code. Okay. So, you know, but for the ML stuff, like that's where I'm, it, it seems like with penny line is they have a lot of this kind of like worked out with, you know, uh, I know, Kiskit has Torch connector, and then Pennyline has Jax. No, well, Jax, the, the big ones would be T TensorFlow and uh, Torch. So in some of those areas, they're a little bit more developed. So if you have a model that you want to start putting layers in, you know, uh, Pennyline layers uh, with QML.QNN.Torch layer, that, that's a little bit more developed. And they just, they have so many de demos. There's like over two, 150 between user demos and their demos and it's it's in, it's very interesting you know where all of this is going so yeah happier asked a good question i mean you're gonna have to spend some serious time i i really think just i it doesn't really matter how much you know about penny lane just run a bunch you know three or four of their demos and then you're gonna have to learn about all this stuff so the past couple episodes you know I've done Penny Lane demos and, um, you know, I broke apart their whole how-to section or yeah, their how-to section. So there's no easy way. I mean, languages are hard because they're complex because they're com customizable. And they're, the reason why there's so much stuff in them is because uh, programmers want the flexibility in, in completing certain tasks in their code. So, you know, watching YouTube videos, watching this discussion. I mean, I don't come across this too often as far as, you know, different plat platforms saying like, okay, we've studied everything with Penny, we we're going to present, or we're going to present on Kiskit, we're going to present on CERC. Not as much, but you have to know them. Like they're what it takes to run real hardware, um, you know, quantum simulators. So that old phrase, whatever works for you, and but it, it takes a lot and the more you can teach other people so learn teach and then start developing if you can get in that cycle then that's it's very effective uh anybody else that we haven't heard from see a number of new people and also some people that probably have good uh you know programming experience in, in quantum too so get certificates you know i i think myself uh if you can learn it and then teach it that that has great value but you know some people you know they just learn better when just you know there's a, a rubric and you follow it and this is how you learn so Awesome. I'll put in the chat here. See, this is the Linux hard part of the discussion. <laughs> okay, so I'll put in these PDFs. Okay. Yes, hi, Kevin. Uh, great. Uh great content uh i would like to know a bit about the company you're working for now if you could explain it briefly 
Yeah, I'm the CEO of Chemical Q Device. So I formed this October 21, 2021. And it has more from just trying to find out more about quantum, having a provisional patent, and learning a ton about medical on the way to. Uh, but the, the primary thing is to making things work in notebooks right now. So I, I have that going and it's going to the next level of getting better for performance or faster too, like metrics. Awesome, so, so get those three in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, did you have something else? Yeah, yeah. So you are doing like a quantum machine learning approach or like hybrid or how is it that run? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing you, you'll find for quantum, it's called quantum inspired machine learning. Now, that typically means you have a quantum simulator uh, instead of a quantum computer, and it's working inside of the an existing ML workflow. Okay, so whatever you had to do in three of these to put it, you know, algorithms in now as part of it, it's running on a quantum simulator for that split second goes back into binary. And, you know, so say for instance, if you have like a ResNet or some other deep learning neural network, then, you know, it, it's also doing the quantum circuit, but think of it in terms of that it got converted back into binary so that it's it's work working in existing models like existing python like it's all of these are python so they're always going back into binary right so they're doing their thing with the library so through penny lane or kiskit or circ and then it's always going back into you know binary code so when you have machine learning the deep learning does its thing the quantum circuit does its thing they both have updatable parameters, like through rotational gates on the quantum. It's just, it's a different way of uh, training than it is for deep learning. Now, what you'll find is the deep learning part because classical is so advanced is that it tends to have a higher weight on say accuracy or loss than the quantum algorithm. But there's no reason why it, can all, why it shouldn't all get better. Right? It's a very simple model from 2012, so. You know, that, that's the biggest thing because you you can do a lot with all of this stuff, but, you know, getting it to the point where it's like, you know, unless you need several hundred GPUs, which you might to, to you know, to get the effect that you're looking for in quantum so that the the two networks, the classical neural net and the, the quantum, you know, neural net, essentially, you're getting more from quantum. Yeah, so the recording will be up on YouTube. You can search for it. So Chemical Q device. Uh, I'll have the deck and everything else on LinkedIn as well. Um, you know, so it'd be interesting to see. I mean, if you've ever mastered a, a computer language, it's the same thing for quantum. I would say it's not technically as hard because, like I said, it's just doing quantum here and going back into classical where people think that's the hard part. No, it's, it's, it's more the languages, I would say. And, uh, oh, you can go on to forums. There's Xanadu forum, there's Kiskit Slack, uh, and you can help people and you can ask questions. The Kiskit Slack is huge. The Penny Lane one is, is mostly, you know, QML. Awesome. Any other last questions? And if not, this has been Discussion 100. Uh, this is Thursday, September 14th, 2023. This is, uh, uh, so my name is Kevin Kochak. I'm the founder and CEO of Chemical Q Device for 100 QML Code Tips. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. Have a good rest of the night and have a productive rest of the week. Take care.